Welcome to the second episode of the 800 pound Agile Gorilla. My name is Jem Janelle. And I'm Tobias Mayer. And this week, what are we talking about, Tobias? We're talking about scaling gems. Talking about the scaling frameworks, the scaling makes sense. Where, where do we start with this? Well, I think we start by what does it mean? You okay. know, what does it mean when we say we're scaling Agile? What's yeah. our starting point there? Do we even understand the word in the same way? What are we scaling? Okay, when I think of scaling, I think of um, sometimes size. So some people, scalability means, uh, I don't know, that, can this work, uh, uh, I don't know, across a larger area? Uh, do you see scaling like that? Yeah, well, I suppose, I mean, the original meaning of it was to scale a drawing or something, or to scale a building. Uh -huh. uh, not to climb, not scaling as in climbing, but to scale, you know, an architectural model of a building or something, scale to size. So it's doing the same, having the same thing in a, in a different proportion, larger or smaller. So we, we, we use the word scaling to mean bigger. Right. So when we say we're going to scale Agile, it means we're going to do big Agile. We're going to do Agile with hundreds and thousands of people. That's, that's really what it means. But isn't there think, something, isn't you're, sorry, something interesting you're saying before? You just said that the, the, when you think of scaling or scale, so if you go to print something out like a document, it will say, do you want this to scale? So it doesn't necessarily mean to be bigger. Does right. it, is it fit for purpose? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's an interesting point. Is it fit for purpose? But, you know, scaling could also mean scaling down. One of the things I was asking years ago was, yeah. um, should we be scaling Agile up or should we be scaling organizations down so they can more effectively do Agile? So descaling? Descaling, yeah. And I think in, in some ways that's the approach that um, Baz and Craig take with their left model. Okay. People often ask me what, what's my opinion on SAFE. Right. And um, right. to be honest, I don't really have one. You know, it's a, it's a framework that I choose not to use. So in terms of, maybe we can touch on SAFE. Um, as you know, it's quite a contentious issue in the Agile um, you know, community. And looking at the scaled um, Agile framework, if you look at the principles of what they use, things like unlocking um, intrinsic motivation, mm -hmm. um, delivering things incrementally, taking an economic view or whatever, these things are, to me, are not bad things. Well, they're all good things, but they certainly weren't invented by the founders of SAFE. I mean, they've been around certainly in XP and way before. You know, I mean, these are all good principles. And of course, we should be doing those things. Yeah. Uh, and any framework that attempts to do that is doing, you know, is, is doing something good. There's not one person in the Agile Manifesto that I am aware of that endorses SAFE. And I don't want to make this whole discussion about SAFE because mm. um, I have to say, first of all, I have no experience of it. Um, I have my own um, bias towards it in terms of I didn't like it. Uh, because of some of the stories I've heard from other people. Right. I think that's a little bit unfair of me as well. Um, it might be. Yeah, I'm just, you know, like, I saw the diagram for SAFE, and that, I think that's what it was. That's what scared me. It scares me too, Jen, yeah. I look at that, I, my, my brain kind of um, goes crazy and I have to turn away. I, I, can't, I can't deal with something that complicated. It just seems like there's a lot um, going on. Yeah. Um, the thing about, I think maybe why the writers of the Agile Manifesto don't endorse SAFE, maybe they do, I don't know if they do, but why some people don't endorse SAFE um, is because the, idea, the, the word Agile originally meant, uh, it was an adjective, right? It was a descriptive word. Right, agile right. software development means doing software in an Agile way. Right. So when you say you're scaling Agile, it's kind of nonsensical. It's like saying if we're doing software in an engaged way, yeah. let's scale engaged. You know, let's do big engaged. What does that even mean? So, it's got, so, it's so got grammatically, no sense. it doesn't actually. So it, does, it doesn't make sense. Grammatically, it doesn't. But then, of course, you know, agile with a capital A has become a noun. Yep. So we can talk about scaling that, I suppose. We talk about scaling Scrum. Yep. Which means, you know, Scrum is something that was designed for a single team, and now we have many teams doing it, many teams working on the same product. Mm -hmm. So when you scale Scrum, what does that mean? Does it mean that you have a product owner and a Scrum master in every single team, uh -huh. or does it mean something else? You know, and there's lots of answers to that, and lots of different ways of implementing it. Um, and again, you know, people implement it successfully, like there's a good model at Spotify apparently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then everyone says, let's do Spotify, <laughs> as if that is something what, you can do just a model. transplant. Yeah, yeah. Do a model. That you know, but my understanding it? of these things is they, things you know, like that model and other, other implementations of, of Scrum or XP in organizations that are successful, they're successful in context, and you can't just transplant it. Uh, especially to non-fertile ground, which is what a lot of these big organisations are. So it'd be like taking a tree that's growing beautifully yep. in a park and put mm -hmm. it in a desert and expect it to grow. So, so why do you think there's so many transplanters in our in our industry that are like, 
because they're looking for a quick answer, right? Right. They want to do it. They want it. Everyone's doing agile. Let's do agile. Where's what's a framework we can use? Oh, here's one that deals with, you know, fifty thousand people. Yeah. That's the one for us. Without really going much further than that. But this is the interesting part, right? For me, people talk about scaling agile when they're not actually even doing anything that's uh, remotely connected to agile. So they've got this old-fashioned process in place. And they want to scale agile, but you haven't got anything to scale. Mm. It'd be like me saying, Jim, can you scale this picture for me? You go, sure. And you go, do you want it bigger? I say, yeah. And you go, where's the picture? And I go, well, I haven't got it. Right, right. You know, there's so, no picture. Scale it anyway. You know, so can you do that, Jim? Well, could you do that? <laughs> I, I mean, I think that I said, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call out one of the elephants in the room. This is very much about what I feel this vlog is around. Talking about some of the hard things. And I, I believe that if you're a big old corporation and somebody turns up with all of the answers in a shiny pamphlet for someone of my I was just saying of my father's generation yeah. um, who's an old school program manager for example my, my generation right, yeah I mean it's you know <laughs> in, the, anyway, in your mid 30s yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so what I'm getting at is I can see the attraction and I can empathise that hold on this agile thing is really hard to nail yeah, so I can see the appeal in somebody I'd say this way because people are for some reason targeting the town <laughs> um, I can see the appeal in people wanting. The cameraman's risk. walking backwards just for, for yeah. your information out there. He's risking, he's, he's risking his life he and really limbs. Is. He really is for agile. So, what is the appeal for people in big corporations to say, "Yes, give me the answers, give me the cookie cuss up, and I'm going to put it into place"? I, I can, I can just see someone like my father of a certain generation running a business. My generation. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know, you're more sort of like my, we're mid-30s, right, so, <laughs> like, I get, like, the appeal, what, what is it? I, like, don't you want the answers? It's a big shiny package, isn't it? You know, that's, people like that. That's, that's what we're used to, that's what, that's what we've been brought up on, you know, the, the bigger and shinier and more flashing lights, the better. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I think that, it sounds crude to say that, but it is, you know, basically that, it's like you're dazzling people. Mm -hmm. Dazzling them with your pictures and your packaging. And also with your answers. Yeah, having answers. People want answers, don't they? Well, why, why, yeah. is this, why is the Spotify model so popular? Because I, I don't think the mo a model was meant to be used as a cookie cutter. No. It was just one way to look at things. I think so, yeah. I think the, the guys that developed that way of working uh, worked in a particular context with a particular group of people on a particular product. Mm -hmm. um, and they had spent some number of years kind of making the ground fertile for it. Right. So there's a lot of work gone into that. And mm -hmm. um, they chose to make some videos about it and talk about the model they use and show some pictures. And it was pretty simple. As if you can just kind of transplant it from fertile ground into a desert. You know, because a lot of these organizations are deserts, aren't they? There's no, there's no creativity, no innovation going on. And um, they just want to have a quick answer. So it works at Spotify, it's going to work here. It's that, that kind of thing. Well, I guess it's going to be far harder to say to people, we're going to try and experiment with a few patents. Mm -hmm. We've got to get it wrong a few times to find out our way of working for our context. That, that, that sounds expensive to some people. It does, and it also doesn't sound fast enough. You know, if someone, it's like, why, why redo the work that someone else has done? I think that's the mindset. It's the why reinvent the wheel question, right? And um, which mm. is applicable in many contexts. I don't think it's applicable when you're talking about working with people. You know, trying to work with people and engage them in their work and, and find, discover better ways of working but through I'm, doing it. I'm with you. I mean, th there are certainly some patterns that may be beneficial to try. Like, you know, giving people, um, let's go really granular, a goal in their sprint. Right. can sometimes make people a little bit more inspired and a bit more excited versus sure. not having a goal. Sure. But what you're saying is there's a lot more discovery that needs to happen. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that people need to experiment. They need to have some simple frameworks to experiment on. I don't think, from what I've seen of the model, that SAFE is a simple framework. A simple mm -hmm. framework is Scrum. Uh, XP is a fairly simple framework. It is it's 10 principles. Mm -hmm. And um, you can start to apply those and see what happens. You know? But I think that if you're coming in with a model that deals with every level of the organization and has role upon role stacked up there that everyone has to you know, change their job titles and fill these things. I mean, I'm generalizing, but uh, it, it's, to me that sounds daunting. You know, what, what sounds like a great start would be to just um, 
have one team do scrum and do scrum well and let and, and let it emerge let let the rest of the organization emerge from that so you know some of the frameworks let's say safe is a good one they've got all of these so there's new names there's terminology mm -hmm. which seems to kind of be more palatable for, yeah. for you know people in, in corporations of a certain generation or certain mindset I'm just trying to empathize with why that like why that, that may be more easy for them to take on change if they hear words that they're familiar with it is, yeah, so I don't object to that. And I think that if, if an organization wants to improve what they're doing and change the way they work, it's all to the good, right? It has sure. to be. Yeah. And, um, and, and so they're looking around to see what the options are in that. And as you said, you know, they, they'll, they're looking at the ones that have the best sell behind them mm -hmm. and the best marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, th I mean, we're, we're talking about safe, but there's loads of other models. There's enterprise yeah. agility, there's... Uh, Is that Mr. Beatles? Is that, yeah, yeah, and okay. then there's less. The less framework and there's then discipline agile discipline agile delivery, agile delivery. Yeah. and there's nexus. something called fast oh there's fast. nexus yeah, yeah the scrum.org thing nexus yeah. and there's something called fast, fast which is much more ground up um okay. very interesting mm. model that's not really used much but uh much much less prescriptive of course so there's a yeah. lot of stuff out there that people can look at and then there's you know, very basic scrum mm. um so there's lots of things to choose from and of course you're going to maybe go with the one that uh, is more predefined, I suppose. And somebody was talking about on Twitter, how many successful agile transformations have you seen? Either none or not many. If these, if, if these scaling frameworks do work, would we, would we know about it? And are there maybe case studies that we're missing? Is, is, I don't know, is that what it is? Are we not well, the thing is, even when people? the case studies are out there and yeah. they, they, they get published and people write about their great successes. I, I heard someone talking recently about a success with a company he'd worked for. It wasn't so much specifically talking about scaling, but talking about transformation. Okay. And um, as he was talking, I, I started to think, I recognize the company he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And I thought, but he can't be talking about that company because they're like one of the most unagile companies I know. But he was talking about that company and his perception of it or his memory of it was very different to See what, you what I experienced when I was there. Yeah. Right. And so right. we don't know when someone produces a case study, we've got to take it with a bit of a grain of salt, really. Um, and not to say that it's not true, but I think that people's, people have different ideas about what, su you know, what success means sometimes, don't they? I see what you mean, like, um, yeah, agile transformation, by whose standards and yeah. what does it mean to you, so on. A successful scaling, to my mind, would be a, uh, a 50,000 person organization scaling down to 5,000 people, 10% of the size. Do you think that's going to surprise some people to hear? Because um, I thought you were just going to say 50,000 people, you know. You thought I was going to say 500. Yeah, ex exactly. Now or five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're half a million and, you know, they're, they're, they're functioning brilliantly, they're bringing value to the customer, so yeah. on and so forth. So you're saying that successful scaling could be less people. I think it has to be part of it because, you know, if we're, if we're talking about agility, mm -hmm. lightweight way of working, you have to start by removing a lot because these organizations, the bigger they get, the more processes they have in place. I worked recently, I just did a two-day engagement at a very big company in the USA who shall remain nameless. Okay. And um, I can't believe the amount of paperwork involved in that. Um, both before I even went there and after I've done, you know, I wanted to just send an invoice and get paid. And I have to go through this long procedure. And I just thought, this is an example of process gone mad, right. procedure gone mad. Uh, and they could argue that there's some regulatory reason for that, but I don't buy it anymore. I've heard that excuse too many times. Processes are put in place to defend something or, or protect something. I don't know exactly what. What but we're running into that all the time, you know, and if you wanted to scale that organization, you would scale it by removing all the unnecessary processes and procedures and simplifying things. So what, so Simplification, what, that would be my idea of scaling. But, but then, so where does it come from then? Where, okay, I think some of this is rooted in the mindset of more human beings means more work and we can be, I guess, more competitive than any other company doing what we do. Does this, um, come, does this come from a manufacturing mentality? Do you see what I'm saying? This kind of like... Yeah, because okay. well, yeah, it does. Because when you add more people in the manufacturing plant, you get more work done. An analogy made between manufacturing and software development that's not a very healthy one, but people get caught up in it. Well, isn't that the old mythical yeah. man month? I think they think they're not doing it. They actually. think they're not doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
only but they are. Some, yeah, we so, see it, certainly. So I, I'll, yeah. I'll share this, and I won't say that at the firm, about two, three years ago, really big consultancy, and I did a bit of work for them, and they were doing a whole scaled thing, right? I felt like a program manager with buzzwords. It was the most soul-destroying experience I've had. Yeah, yeah. I think I was there for about maybe two months. But, and I'm not saying you know program management is- They should have thing. motivated you, Jim. That's what they should have they, done. They should have. They, they weren't um, giving me enough carrots at lunchtime. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll be getting on to motivation um, soon. So let's go back to scaling. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about back to scaling. How do, you, how do you scale engagement? Let's talk about scaling engagement. Agile is about making having people become more engaged in their work and producing a higher quality work. That's the thing you want to scale. Um, you, you probably have to start by the removal of waste. Uh, and that has to be an ongoing inspection. You know, where are we wasting time, money, people, energy? And is that a tough part though? Because what we're talking about is but no one really people's that. roles. People's roles, right, we're talking yeah. about. People's no. livelihoods? Um, n not necessarily. I think that we might be talking about roles. But I think it's more about what you do as a day job. You know, what are you doing day to day? There's an example of a, a group of project managers I worked with once produced this beautiful report every week that nobody ever read. Mm -hmm. And when they were confronted with that, they said, we have to do it anyway. And they didn't want to hear that no one read it. They just couldn't hear it, you know. So until, until there's someone in a, you know, a power position there who says, we're not going to do this report anymore, they're just going to keep doing it. Um, so really, to begin to scale good ways of working, we have to remove the fluff. Let yeah. me ask you this. Um, you wrote a blog once about descaling and it evolved, it evolved with a fish. <laughs> and at, <laughs> at first I didn't get it. I was like, a fish? Scaling? Um, well, that's another use of the word. We, I, I, I <laughs> made the error of talking about scaling a building earlier on, but I didn't mean climbing a building. And scaling means climbing also. But s scaling fish, obviously, is to remove the scales of a fish, right? to remove what you don't want. So it's waste removal, right? So that, I, I guess that would be the same as what I was just talking about, is that in order to scale agility, yep. we need to remove what's unnecessary. And uh, taking the scales off the fish, taking the guts out, makes the fish palatable. Mm. Whereas with all that stuff on there, it's, um, it's not edible. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, you can't take these metaphors too far, Jim. Right? So, no, but no I, I, get, I get the sentiment of it, and I'm just trying to think of this. You go to like um, a really big firm, and you say, you know, we want to help you scale. They're thinking scale is to bring their 10,000 10, human being organization along with agile methodology and ideas. But what we are thinking is more to say, we're looking to reduce waste. And instead of making you guys bigger, you could be smaller. Mm -hmm. And again, it comes back to the mindset of- Smaller and more effective. Right, but then they might think smaller might mean less throughput, less money. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, that's well, they might think that, but I mean, the idea of if you're going into an organisation and having that conversation, that's one of the things you're having a conversation about, isn't it? People make all kinds of assumptions about this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They can't do pair programming because it's half the output right, for the same amount of money. But we know it isn't from experience. Like we know the quality benefits yeah. and so on, yeah. and the cross-functional yeah. aspects. Yeah. I want to go and look at that church. So let's, let's wrap it up then. So let's ask the question, you know, are the scaling frameworks that are out there, mm. are they good? Are they good? Are they valuable? Is it, okay, let me, let me put it to you like this. Would it benefit a big organization to, it, that were completely predictive, um, stuck in a waterfall way of working, would it benefit them to use SAFE rather than not use SAFE? Because I think it would benefit them. I know the answer to that. Okay. I don't know. That's the <laughs> answer, I don't know. Uh, it might summon, it might others. It might not others. So um, will it benefit them? Uh, it will probably benefit them to start thinking about their work differently. Yeah, I would so, say. So we can yeah. agree that for big firms, SAFE could be a good starting point. It could be a starting point to consider at least. I don't know if it's a good starting point because it, it's too much. It's too big. Um, I think the best starting point would be to find one team and have them start doing some XP practices and then start iterating through their work and having some goals. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, learning from that and you know that's why i think that fast is an interesting model because it's very it's ground up it's emergent so fast is another scaling framework. yeah it's another sort of little known one it's just okay. i think it's more of an idea in one What's guy's it called head fast is it called fast i think it stands for fast agile scaling 
something. Something. Well, check it out. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Know much check it out. About fast. It. Yeah. So is safe useful? Is is less useful? Is it useful? Just it's. I don't think it's useful. Just start with those things. I think in order to scale, like I said before, if you want to scale a picture, you've got to have the picture. Okay. That's it. I reckon we're done, Jen. Awesome. For today. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for watching. No, we we welcome feedback. Um, please let us know if you're enjoying it or not enjoying it. Um, yeah. That's Any it. subjects, throw them at us and let's see if we want to talk about yeah, them. Yeah, throw the subjects at us. We like talking, Gemini. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see you later. All right, see you later. Cheers.